Welcome back, my name is Matt and this is Hidden Light. And listen, not everybody has their prints made at a boutique lab with human beings that are gonna pay attention to each one of your images. I get it. So if you were to use an unnamed, much larger lab where the computer will take your file and just print it on behalf of the company and no actual person sees it, I have a solution for you to get prints that you'd like. What happens a lot of the time is that someone will say, okay, I wanna make a 30 by 40 metal print of this image. I'm like, sweet, you should do that. Have fun with that. <laughs> but what happens is they order it and they get it and it looks like shit. It looks low contrast, it looks dark, or it looks occasionally too bright, the colors are strange, HDR happened for no reason. So what I wanna talk about is the process that I recommend you go through when you're working with a new lab that you're gonna to continue to work with so that you make sure your images, especially the big ones, come out looking the way they're supposed to look, yeah? So uh, here's, we're gonna use my machines, my printers, whatever, one of my pictures to go through this. But the same principle applies with any large lab where you don't have the luxury of speaking to a person, right? So what happens often is that people are editing with their screens at maximum brightness. It's a great idea. You should totally do that. Um, and what happens when you edit with your screen at maximum brightness is that when you send that file to a machine that's been calibrated for something where the screen is like way less than half brightness, you get an image that's dark and it looks awful. So what I've done is I've edited this photo. Hopefully you can see that. I went big-ish so that you can see it on camera, but um, Normally I would do this at just like eight by 10, like whatever the cheap size is that the lab offers. So I made this and I edited it at did, 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 did. Did my edits at full brightness so that you can see like what happens. Uh, and it, it's okay, but it's dark. It looks like shit. And so what I'm gonna do now and the process I recommend you do is drop your image into Lightroom or Photoshop. Actually, it's kind of gotta be Photoshop or something with layers. And the first thing you wanna do is edit the file that you see on your screen to look like what the print turned out as in the light you're gonna display it in. This print for me is gonna go hang up in my office, so it's not gonna be in fancy gallery light. Uh, nothing, I'm just gonna use regular kitchen light basically for this experience. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drop my image into Photoshop. You can see that I've got a group of, of layers here that are the edits that I've made to this, including one that apparently I didn't use. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is give myself a curves adjustment layer and my goal is to ruin the image on the screen to match what I got in print. Uh, so it's gonna be darker. And of course what shows on my screen to me and your screen to you will be slightly different. And it's gonna be the lower contrast, even darker. And you know, quick and dirty is okay. It's not the end of the world. Maybe something like that. I could flatten this out a little bit more, but I think that's, and so uh, I'm gonna name this layer check print. It's important to note that this is a check layer. This is a layer we are not going to send to the printer. A check layer is a layer you turn off before you send to the printer. This is super important. So what this layer does is shows me like, yep, more or less the screen now looks something like the print that I received that's too dark and looks kind of shitty. So what I'm gonna do now is make a new adjustment layer and I'm going to modify this image to look the way that it's supposed to look. Ah. And so what should happen is this will compensate for whatever's happening on the printer's side of things. Whether they're applying an ICC profile that's incompatible with your monitor or whether their calibrated system is just 
not as bright as your incredibly bright backlit screen at full brightness, whatever it is, you want your, this layer to match. So I'm just gonna kind of like play around with this. Ooh, yeah, sick. So now I'm gonna like make it look like the way it's supposed to look. I don't think I need to blow those highlights out quite that far, but like, I also don't need any of the fire in gamut, so it's fine. So print, uh, you know, the print that I received, and then this is more like what I think I want it to look like. I'm just checking back and forth on the print. I think that's a reasonable place to be. So then what you would do now to validate this is turn off your check layer, and of course your image will now look completely ruined, like way too bright or way too contrasty or some combination of the two usually. Send it to print anyway. Pay to have another one made. Of course, you're sending these to giant labs, so usually this is not a particularly expensive experience. So if I were, say, going to make a 30 by 40 metal print of this, but I hadn't worked with a lab that makes these metal prints, I would do an eight by 10 of the same image, figure out what's wrong, do this, do the eight by 10 again, see how much closer that got me to how I want it to look in the space I'm going to hang it. And then once I've done that two times, usually is what it takes for me to get that squared away or at least very close, then I know that this layer, what we're gonna call big lab correction. I can save this layer and what it may do is give me a good starting point for future images that I send to this lab. <sighs> now, all of this only applies if you're going to use the same process from the same lab and not let them do any of their auto corrections, which the computer will typically apply for them. Uh, you wanna turn that off and you wanna know that what you send to them is always gonna be a stop too dark or whatever so that you can fix it and have a version for print. So what I would do is file save as, and I would save this as whatever kind of file the lab will accept, typically an 8-bit JPEG because uh, with the check layer turned off, the correction turned on, I would save it as, you know, send to print. So file, save as, send to print version, right? And then you hit save, but I'm not gonna. And then you print it again. And what should happen is when that print shows up at your doorstep after it's come from California or wherever, it'll look much closer. And if it doesn't look closer, or if you went too far, like you do all this at a small size, like eight by 10, something cheap, so you can do a few of them and then you'll know. And then you, then you order the big print. That's what we do here in-house, like when you're printing with us with humans, like I look at your file, I make some suggestions, some corrections. We print one small and look at it and go, that looks like shit, let's fix it. And we rinse and repeat and you only pay for the one final print you don't have to pay me for each of the test iterations that we do along the way but some of the big labs are so cheap that it doesn't matter you know what i mean you, you can achieve the same result paying for pss, three to four eight by tens and then buying your big print as you would pay to just have me do it right the first time anyway so that is uh my theory on how this could or should work. Um, if you have any questions, drop those in the comments down below because uh, that's what we're here for, you know what I mean? Anyway, oh yeah, also there's a thing called ICC profiles and sometimes labs will let you download their ICC profiles to stick on your images so that you know exactly. It's a soft proofing thing in Lightroom. We'll deal with that in a separate video if anyone has any interest. Uh, okay, bye.